Hello everyone, happy weekend, happy Saturday. I'm just getting myself comfortable, sorry, pull the chair up a bit. My name is Marianne, I'm at Once a Duckling and um, I thought I'll just, uh, yeah, just go on, on the live and just do a quick project and hopefully a couple of you can uh, can join me on this lovely Saturday afternoon. Well, say lovely, it's not that lovely. It's a lovely day, but it's not a beautiful day, if you know what I mean. So I hope you're all well, hope you're enjoying the weekend. I've made myself a cup of tea, so I'm gonna be taking a slurp of my cuppa and I hope you can all do the same. And just, uh, I thought it's a very, very quick project. It's probably a little bit similar to some of the projects that I've already done. Reason I wanted to do it is because Sandra had asked for um, a Easter project with a chopping board. And I couldn't find one that I'd done previously. So um, we decided that maybe it was one of the other crafters she'd seen. Uh, but I did have a chopping board and I had some serviettes, so I thought, why not? I'll just show you a very, very quick project that you can do yourself. And um, apparently the chopping boards that she was using are in Poundland. So if you are near a Poundland and you want to get yourself a chopping board, head over there. Sorry. Just take a quick sip. Um, yeah, head over there. See, Nikki has joined me. Hello, Nikki. Lovely of you to join me. Um, you've seen me use chopping boards before and the ones that I normally use are the IKEA ones. They're quite chunky and they're only three pound. Um, I did order another one previously from somewhere else. I cannot for the life of me remember where I got it from. I think it was one of the hobby shops and it looked very similar on the picture but it's quite thin. So that was the one that I was sent and this is the one from IKEA which is why I normally go with these ones and they're only three quid. So when IKEA is back open, get yourself a chopping board and you can do lots of fun things with them. If you haven't seen it already, um, I used one at Christmas time with a um, gift bag and this time I thought we'll use a serviette. So I showed this serviette last week when we were making the, um, the coasters and I just wanted to show you how with some napkins you can have the same napkin, not that I use the same napkin, but you can have completely different projects uh, depending on what you do with it. So that's the serviette. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I think it was 80p for two, but you should get four projects out of it because obviously as you fold it open, it's got the four bunnies on there. So off the live, before I came on here, I did separate the um, sort of the serviette and just took the top layer off because you haven't got time to sit here and watch me do all that fab. So basically, normally you would have either a two layer or three layer serviette and you only need the top layer. So I cut the square off and then I just peeled the last two layers off. So what you get left with is just the top layer, very, very flimsy. So keep it to one side until you need it and make sure you don't put it anywhere where it's wet because I've done that before. I speak from experience and it ruins your project. So the next thing I did is with the chopping board, I measured roughly how much I wanted to have for the actual serviette. And I wanted to make the background light. I wanted to make it bright because if you leave it too dark, because you're only using the top layer, it's gonna shine through and it could make it a little bit darker. So I've got a nice white background, which is why I've painted it just a white. So with some, um, what do you call it? Masking tape, that's the word I'm looking for. With some masking tape, I just literally just put some at the bottom and some at the top and I gave it a coat of white acrylic paint and I left it to dry. So that's completely dry. Obviously I've done that off the live because again, you haven't got time for me to sit here and wait and wait for the paint to dry. Who wants to watch paint dry? So next thing I'm gonna do with some Mod Podge, which I'll put in a bowl. And in the meantime, if you're new here or if you've been here before, just give me a thumbs up, tell me what you've been up to, tell me where you're watching from. If you've been doing any projects today or this week, I normally on a Sunday put a little post out to say, show me what you've been up to. So keep an eye out for that tomorrow because I'd love to see it, all the different things you're doing. So I'm just gonna give this, where I painted the white, I'm just gonna give that a light coat of the Mod Podge. I'm just gonna go over it so we can stick the serviette on the top. Apart from anything as well, I'm just, I'm looking for some other materials. I need to go out or have a look online to see what else I can, um, I can get to mix things up a little bit. But I'm just using up some of the stuff that I've got in the house at the moment. And just uh, trying to think of some quick projects that people can do. And that don't cost a lot of money. So just 
journals to give them a podge. And normally what I would do is I would leave this to dry and then sand the edges. But obviously because I'm doing this on a live, I'm hoping that the sanding of the edges will go to plan. When you put the Mod Podge on, pay particular attention to the edges because you want to make sure that they stick down nicely. So I'm tilting it slightly so the light shows me where I've been. But I'm just adding a generous layer. And making sure that they go right up to the edges. It doesn't matter too much if you go over on either side, it dries clear. I normally use the um, the matte Mod Podge, but there's loads of different ones that you can get. So I think I'm happy with that. So next thing I'm going to do, very carefully, I'm going to try and line it up and just drop the serviette where I want it to be. Now the aim is that you want to try and avoid as many bubbles as possible. So And once it's on there, it attaches quite quickly, so be careful. So you just drop it on there and just slightly pat it down. Now you've seen me do this with the serviettes. I'm just gonna get some um, cling film. Just a bit of cling film. That's it, put that to one side. And I'm just gonna try and see if I can place that over the project, like this, very carefully. And what that does, it just gives you a barrier. When you want to try and get some of the bubbles and some of the creases out, if you're pushing it with your finger, very often um, it's easy to rip the paper. So if you use either a bit of cling film or a sandwich bag or something like that, it's um, easier to actually work out those wrinkles. And what I find as well is that if you use a, a small rolling pin and just go over your project and just try and smooth out as much as possible. I find you're always gonna get a couple of wrinkles, um, but maybe that's just me, maybe Anyone else is completely perfect in being able to do this. But I find this is an easy way, all with your fingers, just very carefully. You've still got to be fairly careful, but it's a lot, lot better than just using it on the actual serviette. So just very gradually have a look to see where those bubbles are and just try and push them out. So let me see if I can hold that up for you. So as you can see, it's fairly smooth. There's a couple on the edges there, which I'm just very carefully just trying to push away. And uh, But a sandwich bag will have the same effect. It will do it. It just prevents it, I'm 100% guarantee that it's not gonna rip, but it's a lot, lot better than if you were pushing the actual serviette. And just work those wrinkles out. Give it another roll. Yeah, I've not seen, has anyone been to the pound shop or pound land to um, see the chopping boards? I've not seen them myself. I don't know which ones, which ones they are. For some reason, when we went to Ikea, oh, quite a few years ago now, I bought loads of these. And I've got quite a few using for different projects in the house. I've got a couple hanging up in the kitchen as well. All right, let me see if I can pull that away. Carefully pull that away when you're happy with it. And then normally I would leave this to dry completely. So when I'm doing the sanding, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it's not gonna rip. But can you see how smooth that has gone on there? Hardly any wrinkles at all. So around the edges, hopefully that will attach. I'm gonna leave it to dry for a little bit. And then with the sanding block, I'm just gonna sand that away but how gorgeous and bright does that look? Can you see how the white actually makes such a difference in the background? If that had been a wood color, this would have been a lot, lot, lot darker. So I'm really happy with the brightness of that. And to finish it off, um, a couple of things that you can do. What I was thinking on the top, if you want to keep it sort of fairly plain, you can just wrap some string around the top. I'm gonna add a big bow. I like big and bold. Um, if you've seen me before, I work with ribbons quite a lot, so that's what I'm going to do. And at the bottom, one of the reasons I left this blank is one, obviously because the design wasn't to be covering the whole thing, but I thought we can add maybe add a ribbon or you can add some words. You've seen me use these Scrabble tiles before, so you can have a little word. You could put spring, Easter, hoppity, something like that, just to give it a little bit of detail and just have a bit of fun with it. So I've cut some ribbon to size, so while I leave that to dry, I'm going to just put the ribbon together 
And for those of you who are new here, you may or may not have seen me do this before. Um, I make messy bows, really, really simple way of doing it. Hello, Diane. Thank you so much for coming on. I know you were moving furniture, so well done. <laughs> and thank you for joining me. And let's say hello to a couple of people. Hello, Sue. Hello, Debbie. Um, another Debbie. And hello, Diane, obviously. And Diane said she has sprinkled the video. Thank you so much. And hello, Kim. What's everyone been up to? Has everyone been able to enjoy the weekend? Oh, my dog's kicking off. I don't know why. Maybe it's a parcel delivery. I'm hoping my husband will get the door. <laughs> my husband's supposed to be wallpapering, but uh, yeah, I think they've obviously seen something outside. I hope they won't set your dogs off. I've had that on a video before. When our dogs start, someone else's dog kick off. So I've got some ribbon that I've cut to size, and what I do, I hope you can see that, I normally just crisscross them. So different variety of different types and different sizes of ribbons, just to add. So what I've done, is the colours that you've got in the serviettes I kind of wanted to bring back into the ribbon. So I've got some pinks, I've got some greens, I've got some whites, and I've got a bit of yellow as well. So just nice and colourful. Um, Diane says, found the door and I didn't have to climb through the window. Well done, Diane. That would have been a challenge. That's always the thing with moving furniture, isn't it? We were talking the other day, actually. Um, my parents-in-law, they had a carpet fitted many, many, many years ago. And they've kind of got like a through lounge. And they wanted to have it all in one piece and they couldn't get it through the door so they had to get it through the window and i can't remember they might even have had to take the window out to get the big thing through and i remember sort of you know causing upheaval in the road so that was a lot of fun so let me have a look see if i've got a bit of string so if you didn't see me do this i've layered um, crisscross crisscrossed all the different size and shapes of um ribbon and now i'm going to get a bit of string i'm going to put that on the top and i'm just going to flip the whole lot over and then i'm going to try and tie that as tight as i can at the back yeah we're supposed to be having a bit of a decorating day today but we haven't got around to it yet lots of stuff going on today you may have seen it was our daughter's birthday today so um we obviously, she's not here at the moment, she's at uni, so we've had a conversation with her this morning and then there's always just a lot of normal things to do. I've got so much ironing, I just don't know where it all comes from. Well, I do know where it comes from, everyone just stuffs all their stuff in the washing. But uh, yeah, Saturday is normally ironing day, lovely and boring, all the mundane sort of stuff. So this is like a little welcome distraction, having a look to see if we can do something else. Supposed to be wallpapering, but I'm watching you. Much more enjoyable. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Get wallpapering. <laughs> My son has just fitted laminate, and I was more scared of scratching or damaging it. Just call me and you're lifting stuff. <laughs> Oh, with the, it's, it's, let's have a look. My son has just fitted laminate. I was more scratching. Scratch, oh, well, with the moving of the furniture, I can imagine. As you say, with the new, you know, if you've got just new uh, laminate fitted, that's a bit of a nightmare if you scratch it. We had a bit of a disaster with that before with um, some vinyl that we had put down. And it's not good, as you say. You're so pleased with something when it's new. And then um, if it gets ruined... So well done for avoiding that drama, but they wouldn't have been very happy either. So I've just got myself a little bit of a bow with all the different colours and you kind of just pull it into place in different directions that you want to do. So in the meantime, I'm going to have a look to see if, if this has dried. Now this may or may not go to plan. Normally I would leave this to dry completely. You get a sanding block and you're kind of just going to hit those edges and see if you can get a nice straight finish on it. Because it's not 100% dry, I'm hoping it's not just gonna get ruined. So very carefully, touch wood, it seems to be going okay at the moment. Can you see that? It sort of gives that really nice smooth edge on there. So all I'm doing is just hitting that edge and taking the sandpaper off, oh the sandpaper off, the tissue off. I'm not going to overdo it because I might wait until this is a little bit drier and then go back to it. So you just get that nice edge 
to finish it off and I think that looks really really nice and it's just a very quick project if you haven't got a lot of craft stuff in the house so if you actually can get in them anywhere um, I ordered these on Etsy was the eBay do them your local garden center will have them some of the craft shops I'm sure do them and the same on the other side just very carefully just hit that with your sanding block or a bit of sandpaper and there you go as simple as that just need to finish that bit on the top here Diane says bless him I came home from work here tipped up the carpet and fitted the flooring on the landing and in the hallway I just have to press on there that is amazing what a lovely surprise to come home to oh that is fantastic I bet that made your day after a long hard day that's lovely to come home to a surprise with something that is all done. Talking of all done, this is all done. I've finished off the edges and normally, as I said, I would probably just wait until it's completely dry, go back to it. Although having said that, if you've seen my coasters, when I let it completely dry, if by mistake you've hit some of the Mod Podge actually on the side, you're probably better catching it before it completely dries because that was a bit of a nightmare. Had a bit of a, a bit of a drama trying to take that off. So my coasters weren't 100% perfect, but still good enough to use. It's just to, to have a bit of fun at Easter time. I did like the coasters because they're so versatile. You can just use them for different, um, different seasons. And you don't have to do this with a serviette, obviously. If you've got some um, some wrapping paper, you've got some scrapbook paper or even if you've got like a gift bag if you've got an Easter gift bag you can do exactly the same thing so that is how it's looking and I think that's looking really really nice just to have sort of propped up in your kitchen or hanging up somewhere very very simple very easy to do when this is completely dried I will give it another layer or two of Mod Podge so it's completely it's the wipeable it just protects it from any sort of you know water or stuff like that so I'm gonna leave it to dry and then off the live I will finish it off and give it another layer so let me just add the bow to the top so I'm just gonna glue this on here and just give it a bit of color probably gone a little bit big with the bow but I do like big and bold colors so I'm just gonna glue that on there and then I'm gonna have a look to see what else I can do just to finish it off so I've got my hot glue gun all I do is just hot glue it on there and press it and just hold it and I said, I get the feeling he will move me into the shit. <laughs> oh. And Diane says she loves it. Thank you very, very much. And Sandra says, hi, Marianne, good idea. Oh, thank you, Sandra. Yeah, I thought when you asked the question about the um, chopping board, it's, um, I suppose it's fairly similar to the one I did at Christmas time. With Christmas time, I used a gift bag. And this time, I love this serviette. I must admit, when I saw this napkin, I was like, he is so cute. I really, really like him. And I love the way that the colours come back in there as well. So you can see on his hat, he's got some daisies. And if you saw my live the other day, when I made the, um, I made like a, a wreath. If you haven't seen it, it's still on the replay. If you want to head over to my videos, you can still catch it. I had some daisies. Now I got them from the local craft shop, but lots of you were saying that you, I think you got them from Poundland and maybe even Home Bargains, and they're just these little cuties. So they've got a little stem at the top. So I'm just gonna snip that off and make it as flat as possible. And I'm just gonna hot glue a little daisy on the top here just to finish it off and I like the way that that comes back in his little hat as well obviously you don't have to go for daisy if you haven't got any daisies you can stick a little carrot on there or another little flower and just hot glue that on here and I do like trying to find um, items that I can use for more than one use and that's why I'm sort of using up different things and I think sometimes if you buy something, you think, oh, it might be a bit of money, but the amount of projects you can get out of it, very often you'd be surprised how many things you can sort of, you know, recycle for other things as well. 
So I've just added a little bit of a daisy on there. And how cute does that look? I really, really love that. It's lovely, it's happy, it's colourful. The bit at the bottom, it's totally up to you. You can leave it blank. Obviously, you don't have to have the wood showing. If you wanted to have it completely white in the background or a different colour, you can do that as well. Um, I left it blank because of the serviette not being the right size and I thought I might, and I don't know whether I will, you can always add a bit of ribbon at the bottom. I don't know how I'm going to hold this up. It's going to be a bit of a juggling act here. Hold on, hold on, because I haven't cut it to size. So you can add a bit of the bottom there if you want to as well, and then that way the colour comes back. I do kind of like that actually. Yeah, I think I might do that. If you don't like it, I like to give you guys different options. A bit like with the wreath the other day, um, I added a, what did I add? I added some bunting at the top. Some people were saying, yes, definitely. Other people go, mm, you know what, it's a bit, bit hectic. But it's just to give you different ideas. If you don't like it, obviously you don't have to do it. So I'm just going to see if I can cut this and add that with a bit of hot glue. And it just gives it a little bit more colour. So I'm just going to add a couple of tiny bits at the front. I'm just going to press that down very carefully. I don't want to press it down too much because sometimes you see the hot glue showing through. So I like to attach it more at the back than at the front. So I'm just going to hold it like this and then see if I can flip it round somehow without damaging my napkin and just attach that at the back somewhere. Just fold it over and just hot glue that down. The alternative, if you don't want to go for lots of colour, if you want to keep it fairly neutral, you can maybe add some raffia or you can just have some twine or something like that. But I really, really like that. I think that's looking happy and spring. And today is the first day of spring. How appropriate is that? If you want to, if you want to add even more detail, you can have some Scrabble tiles at the, um, at the bottom. I've made a couple of signs already with Scrabble tiles, so I'm not going to add them this time uh, because I think it's looking lovely as it is. But if you want to, obviously, that is totally up to you. You can add Easter, Hoppity, Happy Spring, anything like that. Add a little bit of string, you can have it hanging in your kitchen or you can just have it leave propped at the side. I know it's similar to the one that we did the other day, guys, but it's just to give you an idea how something as simple as a serviette can do so many different things. Um, you could even use a tray. If you've got an old tray to hand that you're not using anymore, give it a clean, give it a paint, and you can have that in the middle, and you can do something really, really nice with that as well. As long as you mod podge it, protect it, and then it should be wipeable. I will do a blog post as always. I'll try to get that out as quickly as possible. Um, I'm working on a couple of different projects. And I'm looking forward to being back on Monday for another little one and hopefully do something completely different. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a quick one. If you're just hopping on, if you're just catching me now, you can always head over to the replay. If you want to leave me a comment or if you want to ask any questions, my dog is barking again. Um, if you want to ask me any questions, just pop it in the comments. I will always get back to you, even if I get it on the replay. As soon as the comments come through, I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you enjoyed it guys enjoy the rest of your day enjoy the rest of your weekend um start of spring only a week until the clocks change yay fantastic looking forward to it have a lovely lovely time guys and i will see you hopefully on monday take care speak to you soon bye